Psalm 37, verse 1. Ready for the word today. Amen. Let's read together verses 1, 2, and 3. We're reading from the King James Version of the Bible. If you have it, say, I got it. I got it. Let's begin with verse 1. Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good, so shalt thou dwell in the land. And verily, let's read verse three again, ready to read. Trust in the Lord and do good, so shalt thou dwell in the land. I want to just talk for a little while this morning on two simple steps to a happy life. Two simple steps to a happy life. And if you're already happy, it's two simple steps to a happier life. Because you can always get happier. Is that right? Last week when we were together, we began to try to unmask some of the tactics and tricks of the devil. Uh, the devil will have you to pay attention to the prosperity of the wicked. He have you to look at what sinners seem to be enjoying. And then in a sly and a slick way, he'll tell you that if you serve me or if you come over into the world, I give you the things that are in the world. We unmask the fact that sin is fun. And uh, he'll have us to look at people in the world having fun and they'll try to make us feel like we're missing out on part of the party and our life is passing us by but we unmask the fact that that was just a trick and he'll give people who serve him some things is that right and sometimes if we would really be honest I mean if we just come right down and break it right down to be honest sometimes it appears that the ungodly people and unchurched people, it looks like sometimes that they are prospering and living uh, better than we are, and we are trying our best to please God. Amen. Come on, can we be honest? Amen. Seems like we are always afflicted and depressed and detached from all the so-called fun that's in the world. And that's what the devil wants you to do. He wants you to get your eyes focused on the world and off of Jesus and off of the word because the devil is a liar. And so the text here gives us uh, the deep secret of a happy life. You want to be happy. Now this is a deep secret. He gives us the deep secret of how to have a happy life. How many of you here want a really happy life? How many of you want a happier life? Amen. All right, so the text gives us the secret, and it's, it's deep, the deep secret to a happy life because he wants you happy. Amen. The Lord bless us to come back next week. I'm gonna talk to you from the subject, live like you gonna die. Now, don't prejudge my message because the, the message is going to be on living. So the message is going to talk about you ought to live and enjoy life before you die. But look at your neighbors. That's coming attractions, coming attractions. That's the preview now for today's movie, for the feature presentation. So here's the secret now. It's real simple, but it's deep. He says, number one, if you want to really be happy, have a happier life, don't fret over the prosperity of the wicked. Don't fret over the prosperity of the wicked. We unmasked the fact last week that sin is pleasurable only for a season. Amen? Amen? So don't fret about the prosperity of the wicked, and wicked means anybody that's not saved, because anything that's not of God is wicked. That's a good place to have the first place to preach to your neighbor. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. Anything that's not from God, or of God, 
or like God, God. it's wicked. wicked. Amen. Amen. So he says, don't fret about that. It's the way you'd be really happy. Don't fret. And verse one tells you why. Again, it says, fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be envious against the workers of iniquity. Here's why, verse two. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Anything around here you see that's green, that's not an evergreen tree, in just a few more days, it's gonna start to wither. So the prosperity of the wicked looks good for a little while. But sooner or later, it's gonna gonna wither away, amen? Amen. Just like the grass in the yard, it grows tall and high, but after a while, you come back with the lawnmower, where the devil has a lot of people thinking they sprouting tall, and then he'll come by. He is a child abuser. He'll come by, and then he'll cut you down. I didn't say the Lord will do it. The devil will cut you down. The Bible says he comes with, with a sudden destruction. Be going along thinking you're doing fine, then he come with sudden. And that's what he wants you to do. He wants you to just be happy and satisfied with these temporary little trinkets that he gives you. And then he comes by with sudden destruction. And there you are in trouble calling on the name of the Lord. And you wouldn't have had to been in that trouble if you hadn't looked, kept your eyes over there on Wicked Street, amen? And Crooked Boulevard. They'll soon be cut down like the grass. So don't worry about the wicked. Number two, you don't need to worry about your current state. Your current state of being. Don't, don't even worry about it. Stuff starts coming trying to worry you. You take what is trying to worry you and you say, I'm gonna put this right here, right there. I'm gonna cast this thing on the Lord. So don't worry about your current state, but instead, if I'm not gonna worry about my current state, and I may be going through something right now, but no, she say you're going through it. Don't worry about your current state, but instead, what you do is you do two things. And we're just getting to the two things now. Number one, you trust in the Lord. You got to trust in the Lord. Amen. You got to trust in the Lord. The word trust means to put your confidence in him. Put your confidence in him. The Amplified Bible translates that little part of the scripture by saying trust. Then it says lean on, rely on and be confident in the Lord. Lean on, rely on. Don't rely on flesh, don't rely on people, rely on the Lord. Come on, lean on him. Lean on him, rely on him, and be confident in the Lord. Trust in the Lord means that you're gonna boldly put all your confidence in him. Now, when you say you trust somebody, let's let's unpack what that means. When you trust somebody, here's what trust simply means, and here's a simple way to unpack it and understand it. When you trust somebody, it means that you can, listen to this, rely on what they say. They're going to be reliable to do what they say they're going to do. Come on. When you trust in the Lord, it means I believe what you say and I'm going to rely on it. I'm going to have confidence. If somebody tells you something and all the time they're doing something different, you come to the place where you can't trust them. But there's somebody, listen to what I'm going to say, that always comes through for you. That's who you can trust. Here's a bright bulb moment. That means the light has come on. That means there's nobody you can trust totally but God. That's the second place you got to preach to your neighbor. Look here, now I got to preach to you again. Only person, the only one you can trust totally 
is the Lord. Because he'll always do what he says. Somebody shout glory to God. And so when we get disappointed a lot of times, it's when we put our trust in people. Amen. Pastor Della has a little saying, she says, and this is it, it's so simple. It says, you love people and you trust God. Amen. Somebody gonna be set free just for that. Amen. You love people and you trust God. Amen, somebody. So then, so then, number one, you got to trust. So then, when I trust him, I surrender to him, and I depend on him to take care of everything that concerns me. So I'm trusting him. If it's, if it's concerning me, if it has anything to do with me, I am totally depending on him in everything, if it concerns me, I'm going to depend on him to take care of it. Amen. Are you hearing me? Yes. Whatever concerns you, the Bible says he's perfecting whatever concerns you. So therefore, he is taking care of it right now. And since I don't walk by sight, by what my senses are telling me, then what my senses are telling me don't really matter. I'm going to tell you something about God you never heard in church before. Are you ready? It's shocking. Are you ready? God doesn't have any sense. Selah. I don't believe he said that. You didn't understand what I said. I said it. You didn't understand it. God don't have senses. He doesn't operate by sense. He is the word. He said, I put my name above my word. I exalt my name above my, 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 uh, my whole name. I exalt it among. So in other words, I'm trustworthy. I will do what I say. So you got so the trust means you depend on him to take care of everything that concerns me. God will take care of you. Amen. And a lot of times we mess up because we try to put ourselves in it and our our flesh in it and our good sense in it. Amen. So let's move on. So so so. That number one, trust in the Lord. We have just a few scriptures. You don't have to turn down, I'm gonna quote them. Proverbs 3, 5 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. Psalm 91 says, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in him will I trust. Jeremiah 17 and 7 says, blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord, whose hope the Lord is. He shall be as a tree planted by the waters that spreadeth out her roots by the river, and shall not see when heat cometh, but her leaf shall be green and shall not be careful or worried or in anxiety in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. Amen. Amen. So when you trust God, it says, listen to this, I know that he alone knows my future. Just think about that. He knows your future. He is already in your tomorrow. And he's already gone before you and made a way for you. 
Even if there's a trap in your future, the Bible calls it a temptation, a test, a trial from that which is evil. Even before, even before the temptation, he already made you an exit ramp. The trouble down the road, we can't see it. <laughs> Sometimes the GPS is a trouble ahead, but you don't even know what kind of trouble it is. But he knows. And the real GPS, God's positioning system, will say your exit that I've already created before the trouble even came is just ahead. Take the exit. So tell your neighbor, you don't have nothing to worry about. You really don't have nothing to worry about. So, so number one, we said, which was not one of the two, but it, we just mentioned it. Stop worrying about wicked folk. Get your eyes off them. Get your eyes off the world. Number two, trust God. Understand that he is reliable to his word. Amen. He'll do what he said he'll do. Now for number two, here's the second secret of a happy life. Number two, are you ready? Amen. Number two, do good. Yes. Number two, do good. Amen. Preach at your neighbor, look at me in the square and I like you, their mama and you real serious and say, do good. do good. Let's define that. One translation of that says, listen to this, trust in the Lord and do right. Trust in the Lord and do right. My pastor preached a message many years ago, Robert, I don't know if you remember that when he talked about when, when uh, Saul got saved, he was told to go to Straight Street, and the pastor's message was turn right and go straight. Yeah. Till they hit you about midnight. <laughs> so we've got to not only trust God, but we've got to do right. Yeah. Now we're not talking about now, right as being the opposite of left. <laughs> but right is the opposite of wrong. So we got to trust God and do right. Right is good. I said right is good. Right is good. Now here's a powerful revelation that some of us haven't yet caught, but here it is. Are you ready? You can't do wrong and get what's right. I know that's deep. But you know, a lot of us, the devil got us tricked. He really does. He does. Because the devil believes in trembles. Amen. So he, he knows the word. He believes. He, he can't do it, but he knows it. He believes it. He's scared of God. He fears God. So, so you can't do bad or wrong and get good. Huh? Now, I want you to remember every. I want you to remember everything I'm saying today. But if you don't remember everything that the Holy Ghost is saying through me today, I want you to remember this. Here it is. Everything you do is a seed. Now, 
I want you to remember this, because we're going we to have happier lives. Amen. Everything you do, see, as long as the earth remains, planting seeds and reaping harvest shall not cease. So everything you say is a seed. Hear me now, hear me now. And everything you do is a seed. Now some folk don't believe that. I don't believe that. You're not saying that, but your, your attitude in life says, I don't believe that. But then just as soon as somebody does you wrong, You gonna reap what you sow. <laughs> Pray for me, Allison. I need your prayers. See, you believe it then when somebody has done you wrong. But hear me now. Everything you do is a seed. Come on. So every day you are planting, every day you are planting seeds that you're going to harvest down the road. So here's how we can make life better. Here's how we can be happier in the future. In the, in the future means later down the road, as time goes by, I want to always be walking into happiness. Well, now is the time to plant the good seeds. Can I get a witness? So we can ensure, we can ensure a good harvest by planting good seeds. And we got to do it on purpose. We got the, we got the purpose to do something good. To let all of our actions be godly. Every day. And I'm, 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 I'm setting myself up for future blessings. And look at his neighbor. Say, he's not talking about money. He's not talking about money. I'm talking now about actions. That's what I'm talking about. Actions. We're not even talking about money. So let's don't, don't, don't get nervous in the service. People don't believe this, but it's true. Galatians 6 and 7, don't turn this. It says, be not deceived. God is not mocked. So in other words, I can't go to God and pray loud and long asking God to send me something good and I haven't sent anything good out. One translator said, you can't fool God. And then again, that's why you can't keep looking at wicked folk because you look at them and say, they, they, they're getting by. They're not getting by. I showed you the devil will give you some stuff. One place the Bible even called the prosperity of fools. Come on, talk to me somebody. He says, don't be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. So in other words, when he says that, it means Whatever kind of seed, that means in kind. Whatever kind of seed you plant, that's, you, that's what you're going to sow. That's what you're going to reap. Plant some love. Some love coming down the road. You plant some deeds of kindness. You're going to walk into some kindness. Huh? Huh? But now here's the second thing we got to understand because some of us have not understood this and here it is. Are you ready? Three people. Are you ready? Yes. Amen. Here's, here's, here's the revelation. Nothing is a seed.
I'm just letting that marinate for a minute so it can get down in the meat. The flavor can get in. Really. Nothing is a seed. Look at your neighbor again like you, their mama, you alive serious. I didn't say dead serious, I said alive serious. Gotta watch what you say. Look at them and say, nothing is a seed. So understand now, see, doing good is something we have to do on purpose. We have to purpose ourselves. See, a lot of times we just sit around and wait and wait and wait and wait. No, you got to get up every day looking for opportunities. And if you do nothing, you will reap nothing. You need to hear me. That's why a whole lot of folks are looking for good stuff to happen to them and they haven't done anything good for anybody else. In the last days, perilous times shall come because how men going to be? They're going to be lovers of their own selves. And this is the selfie generation. All I'm concerned about is me. And so we don't plant any seed, but we think we're going to reap something. My wife and I know a man who always talking about, my ship is going to come in. My ship is coming in. My ship is coming in. And next time I see him, I'm going to make him mad. Because we just usually listen to that old mumbo jumbo, don't say nothing back. But next time I see him, I'm going to say, bro, man, if you ain't sent out no ship. You have no right to even expect one to come back in. That's why you're just sitting on the dock of the bay, watching the tide roll away, wasting time. Otis Redden family, send me my royalty check. He just. Shaka said, What's the dock of the bay? What's, 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 what's that? So you can't expect anything to come back. You can't send one out. So, in kind, whatever you send out, that same thing is coming back. And understand, you will always reap later than you sow. So you plant, you plant a seed, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get it the same day. Because it's a seed. It's got to fall in the ground and die. And it's got to be put in the place of where it's invisible. And later on, it'll sprout up. And the good thing about the seed time and harvest, you don't know how. But you do know how, because you know God gives the increase. One can plant, another can water, but God. One translation said, God makes it grow. Are you hearing me? And then you always, here's the wonderful part about it, you always get back more than you sold. One year we did an illustration here at the church many years ago. We, we gave everybody some corn to plant. Corn seed. We're trying to illustrate it. And we gave everybody two kernels of corn. That's all everybody. Everybody started with the same thing. And everybody went and said, we're going to go home and plant our corn. And then when the stalk came up, some people got two ears of corn. How many of y'all remember this? A few of y'all out there still there. Some got three ears of corn. I remember I got two ears. See, I'm from the city, Della from the country. She got three. <laughs> her granddaughter was a farmer. She got three ears of her. But some people got two ears, some people got three. But we started out with two kernels. Come on now. So that was a whole lot more than we started with. So whatever you send out, you're going to get a whole lot more back. 
So if I want to be happy, I need to sow some happy seeds. Let me step over in just a minute, just for a second in the marriage class, because people make marriage hard, and marriage is not really hard. It really isn't. You just got to go in and know what you're supposed to do. It's like a good movie. Everybody left to know they roll. Everybody knows they roll and does it. The movie is a good movie. It's a love story. So everybody that goes in it knows my job as your husband is to make you happy. I got one amen from my neighbor. And my job as your wife is to make you happy. Because that's what everybody starts out expecting. Oh, I met this hunk girl. He popped the question. And then you get something you did not expect because you didn't go in knowing what to expect. Love is blind, but marriage is an eye-opening experience. Are you hearing me? But you got to go in. My job, my job is to live life for your benefit. So you can't tell me anything. If there are two people living for the benefit of each other, Come here, Ohio players. Heaven must be like this. It must be like this. I'm from the 70s cafe. I can't help myself. That's the closest thing to heaven. I ain't getting no amens. I, I tried to help somebody. Nobody wouldn't say amen. So 